have last presentations. Um, the last presenter is uh, Professor Sang Som Jung. He is a professor of Yonsei University, General Secretary of ATC 18. This is Mega Foundations and Vice President of TC212 D Foundations. He has served as Chairman of the Department of Civil Engineering. And he is a passionate the researcher of File Foundation and innovative engineer with a proven leadership in management of a wide variety of D Foundation projects. Thank so you, Mr. His, Chairman. Okay. His presentation is for Simplified analysis of mega foundations for super tall buildings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Chung, and I'm a professor of Yonsei University. And I am very glad to be here because I have a chance to introduce my current topics uh, because I'm just a geotechnical engineer. You are not familiar with me because uh, I'm working on the foundation part especially for about 20 years, in the, especially in the field of civil engineering. So I'm focusing on the, some analysis part of mega foundations for super tall buildings. OK, based on these contents, I'm following introduction, YSRAPT and YSPR. Yonsei uh, stands for Yonsei University, and I'm just developing some RAPT foundations and some fine RAPT programs especially in the section two. And uh, based on this development, I can compare with the numerical studies and uh, with the ca case histories and finally conclude. OK, you can see the Grand Long Bridges in Korea uh, is connecting the, for example, uh, New Incheon uh, International Airport to Songdo, it crossing the the uh, West Sea, uh, it's about uh, 18 kilometers from the airport to the Songdo new city. And uh, this is uh, Incheon New Grand Bridge. It's about five longest bridges in the world. OK, it's, you are very familiar with this just uh, uh, long, just uh, high-rise high buildings. It's a uh, to buy the buildings. Based on these two figures, what's the common features of these two figures? You see, there's a foundation. Foundation. These two foundations, I can say, most of the foundation can use this by raft. Previously, uh, in the past, we are designing the piles for the safe ensure the safe just the uh, stability of these just structures. But in these days, just uh, based on the settlement based design, we can use this kind of pile raft using the small diameter in friction piles. This is a very economical just design part in these days. So I can say in the design of pile raft we have uh, three different bearing elements. One is the pile, and it's the soil, subsoil, and the raft. So to minimize or to control the, the settlement of these just the foundations, maybe, uh, in case of this pile raft, it's the best way how to design the piles optimally or economically to control the settlements. So I'm focusing on this part to reduce some kind of some uh, average and different settlement of the superstructures. Okay, it's very familiar just uh, just uh, maps in the world. You know the, the construction market in the world, the China is the number one in these days for the high-rise buildings. About half of this just 50% uh, of the construction market can be offer, occupied by the China. And the uh, second is the USA, and third one is the Arab Emirate and the Korea is the number four in the rank in the super tall building markets in the world. Okay, this is the one of the, 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 the tallest high rise buildings in the near future. We already just designed this Nekil Tower for find 
this kind of foundation part we already finished. And this is another one, the main tower in uh, Frankfurt in German. They are using some kind of some piled up foundations in the Frankfurt clay. Also another one, Europe Central Park is also in Frankfurt. They are using some piled up foundations. You see the Korean geological map of Korean Peninsula, and uh, there are many pink colors over here. It's, uh, we are now living in the southern part of the Korean Peninsula, and uh, these the geological features, I can say this is the, looks like uh, some kind of a granite nice base, rock base. Most of the part are covered by the granite and nice rocks in the uh, Korean Peninsula in most cases. So, in this situation, usually you are using some kind of deep foundation up to some kind of bedrocks to support the high-rise buildings. It's a common, traditionally, conventionally, you are using this kind of just the deep foundation up to rocks. But we can control this foundation up to around the weathered rocks or regular soil. Up to here, we can design optimally, optimally or economically, we can design if you use some kind of piled up foundations. So there are very well-known just uh, foreign companies in the designing of the foundation part. Maybe you know well. The ACOM, Obiara, they are coming here, probably. They, they are here. Also, the copy and the sums. I'm not sure because I'm, not, I'm a geotechnical engineer. They are most of the part is, uh, is just concerned on the, some kind of structural engineering part, but they are also uh, performing some kind of geological, geotechnical just designs. So many just uh, constructions performed here, Baju Dubai, in Korea, Hyundai, Dusan, Weave, Obiara, they are just designing Busan Lotte Tower, Tower Palace in Korea, Hyperion in Mokdong, Korea. Also, they are just designing Incheon 101 Tower. It's designed. Boju, like this kind of famous one, and Boju Dubai here. They are occupying all kind of designing in the world by very well-known just designing companies in the world. So when we just focus on this by loft foundation, uh, there are some different methods available in these days. It's a simple method. Probably tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the Dr. Pulos will be here to present some kind of some 101 buildings in Korea, designing part. He's very famous just professors in the world in geotechnical part. And another approximate computer-based method is Pulos also perform this work and the render pool. And I am doing this part, some kind of some approximate computer-based method. More rigorous computer-based method is performed very just well-known just scholars over here. Also, I am working on this part using some kind of elastoplastic soil model. There are very famous features based on this kind of just in-house programs, uh, based on Banin P, Landorp, and uh, GR, GARP, and Yonsei file draft programs. They have some kind of distinct features to control some kind of responsive characteristics and the problem modeling part. So I'm just, uh, my just approximate method can be performed to control this kind of just uh, features using computer programs. Also, some more rigorous computer-based method. There are many well-known scholars to control this part by using some finite element method or some uh, continuous method. I'm just briefly summarize the YSPR. This is the, the, the cover pages of YSPR. I'm just to uh, Focusing on the modeling of the raft using some kind of flash shell element, and I combine the Mindelin's plate element and the membrane element with the torsional degree of freedom, 
and I consider the lapped flexibilities. You see, this is the plate, maybe. Uh, this is a plate, and I can consider some kind of some uh, torsion, some translation, and some kind of some actual compressions based on different loading conditions, some kind of vertical, horizontal, and the moment, and some kind of distributed load, like here. And using this kind of plate, membrane, and finally, I just using the shell element to consider the sixth degree of freedom from load. And it permits an easy connection to beam and other elements. Second, I can just analyze the individual piles in the group, in the raft, in the pile raft, using some kind of load transfer curves. Typically, in geotechnical field, we are using this kind of load transfer curves, pile the stiffness, and pile the movement. This is a typical beam column problems here. It's a vertical column and applying some kind of horizontal force is uh, some kind of some uh, bending occurred here by using some kind of beam column elements. Uh, I use some kind of differential equations, some kind of some horizontal equations to solve that kind of a horizontal movement, horizontal bendings, etc. To connect this lapped and the pile head, I use some pile head splits to calculate this kind of stiffness matrix. I just developed one just the principal modes of pile head movement based on some kind of a horizontal rotation, compression, extension parts to capture the uh, stiffness matrix of that uh, stiffness matrix. And third, I consider some soil structure interaction effect for soil lapped interaction, pile soil interaction, and the pile lapped interactions. It's a lapped. I can consider some kind of a soil resistance part using some kind of linear or nonlinear part of this just reaction curves. Also, some kind of lateral uh, just the resistance using some PY, TZ, and the QG curves for both linear and nonlinear analysis. Also, to connect this the lapped and the pile, there is uh, some pile head conditions. So, in, the, in most cases, a fixed or a hinge case, you can consider two both of these head conditions in the analysis. And finally, uh, I just to perform some problem modeling using nonlinear soil and the pile behavior, some kind of non-uniform soil pro profiles. To solve the nonlinear analysis, we must consider some kind of load increment and uh, some iteration process to solve some nonlinear problems. I just uh, include this kind of some nonlinear aspects coming to hold together and uh, there is uh, some lapped over here, different, depending on different loading conditions. And we can calculate some vertical, some pile condition, the horizontal resistance. Any kind of things we can solve using the simple beam column analysis, using some kind of different load transfer analysis. Uh, this is the flow chart of some of my just, uh, just the programs we developed. And this is the pre-process part of this program. And uh, this is the, the configuration of a file lapped foundation in the pre-process. And uh, I consider some linear and non-linear analysis part of soil springs. And uh, I perform some pile soil interaction problems using this main process. The loading conditions. And finally, I can just uh, combine this the substructure part and the superstructure. Maybe I'm not a structural engineer, but I can give some design load to solve this kind of substructures. Based on solving these substructures, I can give some coupled stiffness matrix, CSN part to structural engineers. You can combine and work together and solve this problem for the soil structure interaction problems, I think. 
So this is the, the flow chart that I just uh, considered. In most case, it's a very, just a simple process maybe. To solve these ones, maybe we must uh, work together for the superstructure part and the substructure part. Okay, finally, I can say some kind of numerical simulations. This for the elastic case, it's a simple one. So uh, is uh, the Japanese just the scholars the Kikodomi perform some kind of numerical analysis using some elastic part. And I just uh, combine, I can just capture his just analysis part and I just uh, uh, compared with my just uh, programs and some numerical commercial code and their approaches. And uh, depending on some kind of some uh, analysis, but the general trend can be captured by our just uh, uh, made programs. These are bending moments. It's a non-dimensional form here, but uh, compared to other parts, my one can catch generally the trend of this just the behavior of this part. Uh, this is in the field case, history case. It's a uh, Taurus the Mesa building, Frankfurt in German. They have this kind of configurations, left files and some loadings and the settlements of the left. Uh, I just uh, take out the one just the file left part to s like here and this part. First, I tried this using some Abacus 3D analysis, is a commercial code. I applied to capture the general trend of this just uh, behavior. And uh, by using my just uh, programs, I can combine this one and get some soil springs. And finally, uh, this is the result of the testing, simulation result, based on some, the, depending on the files, maybe. Uh, here, there is uh, some 1860, 80, 86, just uh, there's a field measurement. And uh, another one is a finite element by approaches for the file one, file two, file three, and file four. And finally, uh, this is a measured one. Uh, our just uh, YSPR can capture the general trend of this just uh, settlement behavior part. And second is uh, the, the well-known one in Korea. I'm just simulating the initial part. And uh, depending on the sections, uh, is uh, the GS left is uh, developed by the Obiara in Hong Kong. And my just YSPI is a linear and nonlinear case can capture the most of the part of these uh, just the behaviors. There is some fault over here, and there is uh, some tilt or some different settlement compared to the, uh, this uh, edge part to the central part. Capture the general trend right here. And finally, I can say, uh, just it's a simple approximate computer-based analysis by one. Even though it's a simple, maybe, I can capture the general trend of the, the behavior of mega foundation for high rise buildings. Also, in this case, the in-house programs and the commercial code codes are very expensive. It's very confidential. I cannot get some ideas, some information from their programs. They have their own programs. They don't allow to use this part. So that's why I can say, it is shown that there are reasonably good agreement between the calculate one for my one to in-house other programs, the well-known programs, and in comparison with the result of the previous research. Finally, uh, despite the approximate involved the YSPR can provide a satisfactory solution in both linear and non-linear behavior by or soil below the left. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thanks for your uh, very good information for the foundation of high rise buildings. So, any questions? Okay. Okay, then uh, thank you again. Thank you, Professor. So. We. 
we finish uh, this session and uh, thank you so much for your attendance and now you can go for the coffee break and hopefully see you in the rest of the conference thank you so much